All right, we know the machine is now ready for the brain implantation surgery. All of the devices used in this video were widely discussed in my previous ones. There goes the spindle servo driver. The EMI filter. This one wasn't discussed, but in general, it is here to avoid electrical noise. I usually buy them in used condition. They work and are much cheaper. Some more servo drivers for the X and Z axis. And those get some little EMI filters as well. A 24 volts power supply. This one will supply the relays and the ATC turret stepper. And some smaller power supplies for control circuits. I've got those and some other CNC parts from HLTNC. Link in the description if someone would like to check them out. And here's the main brain of the machine. It's the UC300 ETH from CNC Drive. I made a lot of videos about it. How to set it up and so on. It's epic due to its Ethernet connection to the PC. And it's got a lot of ins and outs bringing a lot of possibilities in the process. Beside that, I've got some breakout boards which will connect to the UC300 ETH CNC controller. To the black ports to be exact. There is also a Chinese frequency divider. I was talking about it recently too. And the analog port breakout leaderboardy. So, the UC300 ETH and all of the devices will be supplied by those DC power supplies. That big black device will supply current and control the spindle motor. The EMI is here to guard our whole cabinet from disastrous electrical noise which can be caused by the crazy servo drive. The same goes with the smaller 750 watt ones. Now the big 24 volts power supply will work together with the relay coils and the ATC stepper motor. Technically it's not present here, I will add that stepper when the ATC head will be built. And it has its driver attached to its back, so nothing goes to the cabinet over here. The same voltage is on the smaller PSU, but I will use it for all the LEDs, buttons on the control panel and so on. Generally speaking, low current stuff. Then goes the 5V power supply. This one will be mainly to power up the CNC controller itself. It will have its little job with the linear encoder as well. The frequency divider on the other hand is going to be responsible for dividing the huge number of pulses coming out of the spindle servo encoder so our CNC controller is able to keep up with counting the spindle position. All of that to be able to do threads, even without an external encoder on the shaft. Those boards will be responsible for sending signals to the devices controlled by the main CNC brain. The signals are being sent in or out of the pins on the UC300 and connected via a ribbon cable to the breakout boards. All those boards do protect the main controller. Those have optocouplers on the inputs. But that's not all at all. There is also a smaller box. There is going to be some old school magic happening. For protection, breakers. Next. Contactors for some further electrical control. And a lot of relays. I personally think that this might be a little overkill for such machine. Well, I don't know. What is your opinion? I think this will make sense. Those little guys are powered with 24 volts. In my machine, out of the bigger PSU. Now the contactors for shutting down some parts of the circuit if needed. Powered with one phase AC voltage. Regarding the breakers, I will use a 16 amp delight one for the 3 phase spindle drive and a 2 amp one for the main contactor. 6 amp delayed breakers for the X and Z axis servos. Ok, I guess enough of the introductory trash talk. Now this is going to be the main power switch. And it goes straight to the cabinet door. A fan might be handy. It is a fan with hydraulic bearings. Should be quiet. 
The airflow goes as the body description says. I will be pushing the warm air out of the control cabinet. To avoid dust in the box, I will use a filter on the air inlet. I start composing a bit first. Important, I didn't order one of the contactors yet, something to consider later. Then rails for convenient mounting process. And some trays. It will be very cozy for the cables there. But first things first. Alright, let's snap all that stuff on. There we go. Now things will get just a little complicated. And the forgotten contactor. Both cabinets will be working in one team, so I'm going to connect them with three cables. And let's the wiring begin. All is going to be done according to the wiring diagram seen before. I'm crossing the lines which already exist in my cabinet. You know, just to avoid mistakes. Now getting back to the main cabinet. First of all, the artistic electrical composition.
Everyone's on position? Okay, let's go. To make the cable management a bit more convenient, I'm going to use some spacers to bolt down the CNC control stuff. Thanks to that, I'll be able to route the wires below them. <laughs> 3D printed. After a dozen of swears, I managed to bolt down the breakout boards on their place. Okay, there we go. Everything on its place. Now the medical wiring process. All the protective earth wires go into one point. I was told once to do that that way, so I do. To be honest with you guys, the green part is something which will be available soon for buying. It is a placeholder for the UCIB board. It will be a new type of breakout board made for the UC300 ETH CNC controller. It will let us use conveniently the one last port on the controller which was a bit hard to use for less experienced users like me. More information on that topic soon. There is so much work with all those wires, I started getting crazy. I mean, I'm working on it for like two months considering I'm working on it only on weekends. It doesn't look like that, but it's really time consuming. And it starts to look terrific. I mean, really scary, at least in my opinion. But that's far from the end. No time to waste. Let's proceed. I soldered some additional wires to the servo signals plug. Our machine will be just a little bit more advanced than usually the homemade CNC's are.
Finally, the smaller box gets mounted to the bigger one and the steel plate with the devices goes into the cabinet. This will allow me to do the rest of the wiring. The smaller one is ready after some additional wiring. Wait a moment. Having everything done on the smaller one, we are ready to put everything on the machine. All the fuses, contactors and the relays are ready to do the work. Hopefully there will be no smoke after powering up this thing. Having so many wires is a little scary. Let's proceed. Straight to the lathe. Done. Won't be running away anymore. I hope so at least. Now things are getting serious. There will be quite some electrons flowing through this cable in the near future. And there they go. The cables which connect the small and the bigger cabinet. and even more wires for connecting the operator panel with the main control cabinet. All the sockets with the wire soldered go in the pre-drilled holes. It was a lot of soldering. Thankfully my wife was with me, so it went really smoothly. At this point most of the internal wiring is finished, but there is still a lot of work to do. I've got to connect the servo motors to the drivers, prepare some limit switches, connect the operator panel that was prepared in one of the previous videos and finally make the ATC turret head and the pneumatic tailstock. So still some way to go, but we are close. Next time I think I should be able to fire it up as it is now. So the axis and the spindle should be live. We'll see what the future is about to look like. But I can't hide, I'm quite excited at this point. Was a pleasure to have you here and if you enjoyed, see you soon in the next one.